What's up fellas? In this video we're following up on the 1000 watt soldering iron here. We're pushing about 1400 watts and as I said I needed something that could solder to stainless steel very effectively. I've got a build going on right now and as soon as the materials get here I've got to be able to pull this off with ease and wow am I impressed with the performance of this thing. I made some DIY round stock out of some scrap materials that I had laying around the shop and that's kind of a uh, Another part of the project that I talked about, I told you guys I had to make some cones out of brass. And I've got a little bit of that in here too. Uh, shows me smelting the brass and how I made the DIY round stock. So let's check this out. Alright, I ran out of brass the other day. We got the soldering iron tip completed. This was just uh, poured into one of these tubes and then turned on a lathe to make this tip. That's the size of the electrolyzer cell that I'm using. That's a massive dry cell. Okay, so these hydrogen flames are very hard to see. Whoa. <laughs> so 1.4 kilowatt soldering iron we're looking at here. That's a little much. This might be too much. We might have to beef this down. Don't like that. That's really freaking me out. That's a lot of power in there. Uh... Ooh, she's pretty scary, boys. I am uh, thoroughly frightened. Going with this stuff here, that's some good stuff right here for stainless steel. Let's see what we can do here, guys. We're uh, doing some stainless steel side. I'm gonna do the push move. Let's do the push move. She's putting down a beautiful bead right on some stainless here. Plenty of power. How well the GoPro picked that up? This thing just laid a beautiful bead of stainless, or a beautiful bead of silver solder on stainless. We'll try a different solder on this one. This is some great flux that I'm using here. A lot of it's in the flux. Now this next batch of solder I'm doing is gonna be nickel bearing solder. It's a little bit different. It's a heavier duty or stuff takes a lot more power to run it and it's a thicker solder for filling in thick gaps I think just hitting it with a damn hammer is going to be the way to go I ain't got all day dude boom son I got a roll so this thing is Let's just face it, it's badass. I mean, wow, dude. This is in a low flux area. Yeah, I already don't like that much. There's splattered flux everywhere, though, so it's probably going to go ahead and do it. We were boiling it. That is just incredible tinning. All right, guys, so here's some brass scrap that I have, and this is all part of the same project. The soldering iron and these brass rounds, It's I built the soldering iron to do some more work to an item that's going to be shown at the end of the video, and this is kind of what we got going on here. We threw this in the forge for about seven minutes, and we're using quite the air compressor to do this in that amount of time. This thing is uh, screaming. It sounds like a rocket. It, it really is way past the jet engine phase with this kind of power drinking through it. I revved up the engine a little bit. Um, it died on me the other day, and I wasn't letting that happen today, so I revved this thing up to about 85% power there. And here we are seven minutes later with the crucible full of molten brass. And I'm just pouring it into these painted steel molds. I sprayed a little high temp ceramic paint in there to stop it from literally brazing right to the steel. And we end up with something that looks like this. At which point I just kind of turned it on the lathe and eventually come up with some really nice looking round stock. This particular piece here gets turned into a cone and I made um, kind of a makeshift taper attachment here. You see that piece of aluminum that I have screwed down to a stack of wood blocks this is the grizzly mini lathe by the way 
I'm pretty happy with this little thing, man. It's got some power. Look at the chunks of brass it can throw in your face. It does really well. It was about $1,500 buy, and I would definitely do it again. So, the taper attachment was a little spongy. So, I'm taking a file to it towards the end here to kind of get the sponginess out of the blocks. But nonetheless, I ended up coming up with a fairly highly accurate cone. And um, I don't have a cutoff tool, so I'm just using a hacksaw to do this, and it seems to work out great. I'll probably never stop doing it. I did the same thing with a utility knife the other there day. There guys. Man, that is a beautiful piece. Not too bad. So, so now we gotta make another one. <laughs>